All righty. Well, good afternoon, almost evening again, everyone. Um, let's go ahead and, and start with a word of prayer. But before I pray, do you all have any praises or prayer requests? Uh, continue for all the children, for the Holy Spirit, because we read that the Holy Spirit is um Lord reign in the time of the latter rain. Amen. Um, do not rest satisfied that in the ordinary course of the season rain will fall. Ask for it. So that's my request. Absolutely. Yes, I've been studying that very thing recently, and so we will be getting into that probably more next Monday, but absolutely, I will pray for that. What about you, Auntie Pompey? If not, that's okay. We can, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I quite agree with the prayer request for the Holy Spirit, um, discernment and wisdom and understanding, and the knowledge too, which is very important. And um, special prayer request from my end, from Wednesday to Sabbath, we have... Um, a special uh, meeting with um, church brethren to um, appoint administrator for the SVG mission of Seven Day Adventists. Okay. It has been um, a special prayer request for us because we really want the work of God to be moved in this part of the divine yard, especially to embrace the work of the medical missionary, the health message. So that's um that's one of my special prayers. Amen. Did you mention something about your aunt? Did I hear that? Aunt, no, no, please. Okay. The the SVG mission of seven the Adventists. Okay. They had a special meeting from Wednesday to to ritual climax Friday evening and then a convention on Sabbath. And it is to select um administrator for the SVG mission of seven the Adventists. Okay, and you say that SVG? Is that right? SVG. SVG. Then the Grenadines. Okay. All right. Well thank you for sharing these prayer requests. These are very important requests. So let us take it to the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this evening that you have given us, Lord, yet again to uh, spend time with you, to read your word, to talk to you. I pray that you would please forgive us of our sins. Um, please bless us with your Holy Spirit as we open your word. Please, Lord, help us to understand. I pray that you would... Um, Please be with all of the homeschool students that have joined us this school year in the ASF homeschool program. Bless each and every young person, Lord, and help them to go out into the world as world changers for you, Lord, with the proper training, rightly trained, Lord. I pray that they would enlist themselves in your army and that they would tear down the forces of the enemy and that you would make us, Lord, um, soldiers for you as well. Please be with the teachers, administrators, and all the staff that are helping out with this school, and give us your Holy Spirit that we may reach the hearts of those who we have to deal with. And Lord, I also pray that you would um, please especially hear Auntie Pompey's prayer request, that you would be with this special convention that is going on right now, um, as um, the people she has mentioned, Lord, Seventh-day Adventists are gathering together to elect or select um, some new administrators. So Lord, this is a very important decision that has to be made. And we just ask that you would show 
uh, you who knows the hearts of all men, that you would show who you have chosen, Lord, and that the leaders that you want to be in office would be selected, and that the people gathered would have a wonderful time at the convention. Thank you for hearing us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. You're so welcome. All right. Well, we will continue on. Um, today, we are going to be studying about seeds again. Let's see. You guys can see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay, let me put all this away. All right, so our devotional topic for tonight is called the Farmer Evangelist. You might ask, who is this Farmer Evangelist? Well, it is each one of you gathered here this evening. <laughs> um, God calls each one of us, as uh, one of our sisters was just sharing, to labor in his vineyard, right? We are to deal with, um, we are to deal with God's plants. And so here's the thing. We are all children of God, but God gives us the choice about whether we will be plants in his garden or not. And how may we become a plant in his garden, you may ask? Well, we can turn in our Bibles to Psalm chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. Verses 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he med meditate day and night. And this person and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in due season. In his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall not shall prosper, shall prosper. Amen. So according to Psalms chapter one, a tree um, in God's garden, a plant for him is somebody who chooses not to go the same way that sinners are going, making the same choices that they're making. And so not only are they not choosing a sinful lifestyle, but they are choosing a lifestyle that matches with God's law and his word. And not only do they choose that life, but they choose it gladly. They spend all their time meditating in God's ways and they delight in it too. So this is what it means to be a tree of righteousness, as it were, and a plant in God's garden. And he wants all of us to make that choice because our Lord wants more plants in his garden. But in order to get plants, we all have to, we have to do something, right? We have to start somewhere. We can't just walk outside and all of a sudden there's plants. That only happened once, and that was in creation when God spoke the word and the plants appeared. But what do we see on the screen here that has to happen before we can have plants? There's some soil. Yes, there's soil. That's right. But what do we have to put in the soil? Something very tiny and special. Ah, uh, seed. Exactly. Yes, that's right. Right. So just like any other plant, um, there has to be a beginning. And the same is true with God, I found. If we want to be trees of righteousness, we have to start somewhere. And we have to start with seed. We ourselves have to sow the good seed in our hearts. And then we have to go out as farmer evangelists and sow seeds in other people's lives, too. So... I have some pictures here. This is one of um, the fall garden. Or right, let's go back. This is our fall garden. And by God's grace, it's not eaten up with slugs and aphids yet. <laughs> I'm trying to see what I can do to keep it like that. But I had to sow seeds. I think some weeks ago, I was actually sharing. Hopefully, you all remember that. But I had the, um, I had my little seeds in my hand. I had my little seed trays. Well, now they're bigger. Um, 
as we were talking about, you know, the parable of the sower. And then on my brother's farm, we have been having some different pumpkins and squash and butternut squash, all from the things that he's been sowing earlier in the year. So if we want plants, we have to sow seed. That's what nature teaches us. And in God's word, it's no different. That so, looks beautiful, though. Yes, amen. It, it is beautiful. God makes beautiful things. He's really good at that. We just need him to, to help us out. <laughs> um, Mr. Kim, can I please have you read Matthew 13, verse 24? Okay, and not a parable, but he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Yes, amen. So we just saw some pictures of some fields, right? And those fields, especially the pumpkin one, was ready for harvest. But again, before we can get to that point, we have to start with the seeds. And the seed the the lessons that we find in the seed are so powerful and so amazing that Jesus himself says the kingdom of heaven is like a man which sowed good seed in his field or in other words the kingdom of heaven is represented by seed sowing wow <laughs> it's just and it's so compact you know but it's like as we do these things as we spend time in nature as we observe the way that things go in the natural world we can learn so much about how god wants things to be done in the spiritual world so let's keep looking and let's see what type of lessons we can find about soul winning and evangelism through the seed because god is telling us the seed will tell us the basic tenets of what we need to know in, in winning others for him. So can I have someone else please read Luke chapter 8, verse 11? Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Amen. Thank you. So Jesus is saying this in reference to the parable of the four different types of ground. Uh, the wayside, the stony, the, the thorny ground, and then you have the good ground, right? And just so that there's no reason to doubt what it is, he's talking about the word of God. So just like when a farmer goes and sows seeds in the ground, the same is true with God's word. And so for us in evangelism, well, we can know based on this scripture that any time that we have the opportunity, like now, to study the Bible together, to share scriptures with each other and speak the word of God, we are sowing seeds that have the potential to grow up into trees of righteousness. And not only through our spoken word, but there are a lot of other ways that we can witness God's word. Some of them include um, sharing the Bible. Some people have ministries of uh, call portering Bibles to people who may not have them. We have, we have many Bibles, you know, in this in this day and age and in, in America and just in this time, you know, you can pull up your phone, find the Bible, a lot of different stores, hotels and things are just flooded with God's words. But we have so many different resources and that's just some of them. Can uh, anyone else think of any other ways that we can sow seeds of God's word in this modern time? Entering 
Exactly. That's that's a good one too. The entering wedge through the metal commissionary work. That's that's a high, <laughs> a very high kind of seed because when it's done right, we are living God's word. We are showing his love that God is love, that God cares about cleanliness, about order, about um, hygiene and principles of health, right? We are showing that through our actions even more than just speaking it. That's a, that's a good one. I like that. Right. Did anyone else want to share anything? I was Oh, you're kind of going in and out. One system. of them. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, I was listening to a video by Joshua White. And he was sharing that we can have different schools. And one of those schools are that we can actually take um, children that are non-Christians and teach them agriculture, um, practical skills, all the different facets of true education. And um, they actually had a school like that in Africa and 99% of the students were baptized. So... That's a way of sowing seed too. Amen. Praise God. That's that's wonderful. And a lot of times in situations like that, you have the opportunity to uh, so many different types of it's all God's word, but you know, you're able to speak it, you're able to live it, you're able to give them the printed page as well. And all of those things can work together to help them to choose to become plants in God's garden. So that's beautiful and wonderful. Another thing that I really appreciate is sharing literature from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We have glow tracks, we have MAGA books, we have magazines, we have pamphlets. Um, Sister White said, you know, that our publishing houses will be the means of spreading the three angels message around the world and, and fulfilling that prophecy, which says the whole world is enlightened with its glory. Well, a lot of that is going to happen through the publishing work. And so those are seeds too. And just like we take our regular seed and we put it in the ground, we want to sow abroad God's word wherever we can so that there can be more plants in his garden. Would you say that um, a parent responsibility to the children from the stage of a baby in terms of teaching and guiding them in the word of God. Would, would that also be considered a seed? Because when I reflect on, um, say, Deuteronomy 6, when God said that he must teach his word mm -hmm. to his children, when they're lying down, when you're walking, you're talking, you know, right? Um, I think that will be considered a seed too. Amen. Yes, I see what you're saying. That's uh, what do they? I think they call it that Shema, right? Um, the Lord thy God is one Lord, right? And you shall love Him with all your heart. And these words you have to teach them diligently to your children. Deuteronomy six. I would say that I wouldn't necessarily call that whole experience a seed. I would say the experience as of a whole, um, as a young or as a mother teaches her young children to um, to abide by God's words and help them to understand at all parts of the day. I think that whole work in general is like the farmer evangelist sowing the seeds, right? Because you're taking God's word, which is a seed, which is principles, which are things that you yourself have experienced and try to abide by, and then you sow it by trying to then teach it to your children or um, convert it to a way that they can understand and really make it their own. Does that kind of answer your question? Well, um, maybe I did not explain it properly, but I think we are saying the same thing. 
So yeah, I think so too. whatever is invested in the children is the seed. The children is the seed and the Lord of God's work. Right. Yes. As long as it's in harmony with God's word, it is seed because that's that's what the seed is. That's what the Bible says. And so if that is what you're instilling in your children, then indeed you are sowing seeds. And the Bible promises that uh, when they're old, they're not going to depart from those seeds. They're not going to depart from the way that is right. It will uh, grow up into the tree of righteousness that God promised it would. Amen. Praise God for his promises. Yes, exactly. So this next slide um, is from, the reference is from Matthew 13, 18 to 23. And I won't read all those verses now. You can um, save it for your reference if you want to, because we talked about it some weeks ago. But this is the story of the, the sower and the four different types of ground. But excuse me, what I find with this parable is that many of the seeds germinate, about 75% actually do get a chance to grow, but only 25% actually make it through to the long run and bear fruit. And so as a farmer evangelist or as gospel workers, which we all are, this should tell us we need to sow lots of seeds because we don't know what actually may come to fruit. So instead of being sparing, we should be really abundant, whether we have the opportunity, like I said, to speak or to share literature, or as Auntie Pompey shared, um, instructing her children, whatever opportunities that you have, we should make the most of it and really try to maximize it. Because Again, we don't know what's going to bear fruit. We don't know what's going to make it to the end. Just because something sprouts doesn't mean it's going to make it in the long run. So we really have to be abundant in our sowing. We also find from Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 to 32, is that the Bible says, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field, which is indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Now, this scripture reminds me of another scripture that Jesus says, which says we should be faithful in the little things, right? And that's something, especially for me, it's been coming up again and again. And again. <laughs> I'm just like, Lord, help me, help me to get it, get it through this, this hard head of mine and help me just to understand that it is the little things that change the world. It was 12 unlearned, if you would, uneducated, just fishermen type of guys who went out into the world under the instruction of Jesus and turn the whole world upside down. And the effect of what they did is felt across millions and millions of people, thousands of years still to this day. Um, it, it only takes a little bit, you know, one, one woman's son from a woman who was barren in the Bible grew up to be a prophet of a whole nation and help them turn to God and to be faithful. It's the little things that have the most impact and important with God. So as evangelists and gospel workers for the Lord, um, it would be well for us to remember that the seeds that we're sowing are the least of all seeds. It's the little things that really do often make the biggest difference. So we should be encouraged. We should have faith. And let's see. I think I have two more here. This is the second to last verse. And then we'll close it out here with a word of prayer. Um, can I please have someone read verse 24 and 25 of the same chapter?
And now the parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Thank you. So Jesus also, you know, just continuing to teach us just from plants, just from farming and gardening, he's teaching us yet another thing that we need to know as evangelists working in his field. It's not going to be easy. There is an enemy. We do have an enemy. He did do something pretty malicious and he sowed evil seed along uh, with the good seed. He sowed tares among the wheat and then he went away and is not taking any responsibility for it, not giving us any help with the problem that the problems that we may have to deal with. But Jesus tells us, you know, this is not of my hand. This is not of my doing. An enemy hath done this, but be patient until the end. And he's going to gather up the wheat. He's going to separate the wheat from the tares and he's going to handle it. So as we go about our work of sowing seeds, things may happen. We may get discouraged uh, or we rather we shouldn't be discouraged. We may be tempted and try. The enemy may sow whatever weeds of doubt, discouragement, frustration in our, our good crop, but we shouldn't let it get the best of us because Jesus will see us through. It's normal. In fact, we should expect it. We shouldn't be surprised when the difficulties come because it's good for us. The Lord says, if he would have torn up those tears, if he would have removed all those problems that we have to go through, it would have torn up the wheat also. So in other words, it's best for his garden that they just have to deal, deal with the tares until the time of the end. And we find that the harvest time is at the end of the world, later on in this chapter, verse 39. But lastly, let's uh, let me read you verse 37. Jesus is speaking. He says, He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. That is, to me, the keynote of this whole chapter, right? It says, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather them at the time of the end. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. In all of this, Jesus is trying to, as it were, set our mind on another time. A time that is yet to come. A time that will be the brightest moment in the history of this world. And when that time comes, it says that, the Lord Jesus is going to be the one to do it. He's the one to send his angels. He's the one who sows the seeds. He's the one who watches over his garden day and night. He never sleeps. So in all of our sowing and all of our watering and our working, we need to remember that the chief farmer, um, as we are dealing with the seeds, is Jesus, and he will see us through. Does anyone have any other scriptures they'd like to add or any questions or comments? Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> we are encouraged because we know that Jesus did not do that. It is our enemy. And we will continue to fight on our knees for the victory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's such a beautiful encouragement and a blessing. It's just amazing how God really come true in his word when he said he has given us all things pertaining unto life and godliness. Because all these little things, this, these little experiences of just sowing a seed can really show you the plan of salvation. Sometimes we just miss it because we are caught up in the physical so much. We miss the spiritual blessing that is in it. 
I'm just thank you. I, I thank you. I thank you that such a beautiful young lady, you're allowing the Lord to use you. And I believe with all my heart that the Spirit of God is already pouring out on our young people who are making themselves available. Thank you. And thank God. I appreciate it much. Yes. I, I would like to second that to Sister Pompey. That is truly a blessing. Well, I told you this already. <laughs> that is truly a blessing to see young people who um, usually are engage in other things, many other things, searching the scripture and expounding on the scripture. I like your heading. Um, as you said, all of us should be um, um, garden missionaries. Well, mm -hmm. Not garden missionaries, what did, what's the topic? <laughs> Farmer Farm evangelists, that's what I call it. Yeah, yes, that is a so fitting. That's what we all should be because um. I was abroad recently, and so I went visiting different families. And I said, what can I give them? Mm. And so I decided to help them with their garden. Yeah, what goes with what? What to, what, um, what to put with what plant? What to compose? And, uh, you know, taking the dead leaf off. And, you know, you pointed everything back to Christ. So I was just going around and helping people with their garden. And the herbs and stuff. So it's a truly yeah blessing to to put with your your presentation. I was really uh, blessed by it. Just giving me more information and some ideas. Thank you very much. I like your topic very much. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God! It seems like it was quite timely for you after working in a... because I'm thinking of yeah of something yes and. Yes, and garden is is along my way a lot. Too. Herbs, um, more specifically. Very nice. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you so much, and indeed, all glory to God. I am, um, just very happy He left us with with these words that we can encourage ourselves with and just learn so much from. They're really inexhaustible. Well, let us now close with another word of prayer, please. Bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for your word, Lord, and the truth that we find in it. Thank you for allowing us to be plants in your garden and then calling us to go out and sow more seeds, Lord, so that there could be even more plants in your garden. Lord, I pray that you would please forgive us of our sins. Please forgive me for not walking in all of these wonderful things that you have already spelled out so clearly. And for all of us gathered here, Lord, wherever we have fallen short, I pray that you would forgive us and apply the blood of Jesus to our records. And uh, please make up the difference in the life of your son. Help us to fulfill this calling, Lord, this high and holy calling to be farmer evangelists for you. Help us to sow the seed Help us to sow the good seed, which is the word of God. Help us to sow abundantly and to not withhold our hand. Help us, Lord, to not be discouraged in the way, but to be wise and intelligent, knowing that an enemy has done this in, in the troubles that we may face. And Lord, help us to look to the end and no time before then, Lord, for when Jesus comes back, may all of our hope in him be found. Thank you for loving us. Guide us through life, Lord, and, and save us, each and every one of us, gathered here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Madison. Have a blessed day, everyone. Yeah. See you tomorrow morning, 5.30. Bye-bye, Saints. Bye. -bye. See you next Lily. time. Bye. Bye-bye.